Hey, welcome to my show. I'm Schnoodlebug. This is a DIY podcast about making stuff no matter what. As always, this episode is brought to you by Schnoodle Video, your one-stop media shop. Is your band looking to make a lyric video for your next song? Schnoodle Video offers affordable animation for artists wanting to take their visuals to the next level without breaking the bank. For examples of their work, check out schnoodlevideo.com or hit the link in the show notes. Tommy Wilson is a Vancouver-based graphic artist utilizing a combination of secondhand printers, photocopiers, and Xerox machines to create intense, subversive, monochrome masterpieces, which can be seen on shirts, 7 inches, and flyers for 31G Records and 625 Thrash, the label that also releases music by his band, New Sweat, which just released a four-way split with fellow BC thrash bands Hacked Apart, Con Artist, and Body Rot. Yeah, uh, it was always show posters, like more show posters than anything, right? Like, uh, just always playing in bands. No one else wanted to, like, none of my friends were interested in, like, the design side of things. They were always just, damn, down to go to practice and shit like that. But um, I always just got stuck with it. Not, you know, I was always happy to do it, but, like, I was always the one, like, making show posters and, you know, handing them out and shit like that. So then, yeah, I was working in a grocery store in Squamish and just absolutely fucking hated it. I was like, I got to think of something. And I was like, oh, I like this. So then just went to design school. So I was like, I need to get the fuck out of here. So I graduated high school in 2008 and then worked a handful of shitty jobs until I was like, hey, that's enough. And yeah, I went to college in 2015 and graduated in 2017. Growing up, I guess when I was, you know, started going when I was 12 or whatever, there was always one once every couple months, right? I'd say once every two or three months. But then all the like older punks that were setting these shows up, they all moved to the city. And so we had to start going to shows there. And I was staying at my buddy's house, you know, one of the older Squamish punks that had moved a van. And he was just like super drunk. And he's like, man, when we were like, you know, your age growing up in Squamish he's like we would just like ask our parents like hey can we have like a show in the garage and just get all our shitty bands together and just he's like you just gotta do it yourself man so yeah then we just it was just pretty much something to do right and then I kind of it's I've been doing it so long that it's like people still hit me up I'm still happy to do it but it's like you know I'd say after this long, I'm a little burnt out. I'm trying to do a lot less this year, pass shows off to other people. So I'm just, I'm fucking over it, man. <laughs> right. Yeah. It's like you you were doing it all. Like you were organizing the bands, making sure they were coming to town at the right time, which I would imagine yeah. is pretty difficult. I guess when we were in high school and stuff, it was always kind of just local bands, but yeah. I'd say near the tail end of high school, then word kind of started getting out that there was like shit going on in Squamish. So then like touring bands started coming here and they'd tell their friends and like, yeah, there was like, I don't know, at one point there was a show like almost every week. It was pretty busy, right? So and where were you holding these shows? Uh, houses, whatever, whoever had a fucking punk house going, or like you know, the youth center. Sometimes, like when um, cops started kind of busting up house shows and shit, there were points where we would just grab a fucking generator and like go out to the woods and just have like a fucking show in like the ditch on like the fucking side of the road. Shows in the ditch, shows in the forest. Fucking, we'd have them just anywhere we could right so like if you wanted to you could have it at the youth center would it have been a big deal to throw that kind of thing like did you feel like the the city or the town had that infrastructure that kind of allowed you guys to do your thing or um i think they were a bit more open to it when we were youth but then when we were like 20 or whatever they're like you know it's kind of you guys are just kind of uh adults that need <laughs> need to go find something else like I'm sure if it was like a you know 16 year old kid asked, they were a lot more understanding when I was that age. But you know, 
I think when I was 20, they're like, the fuck are you doing, right? It's like all, all your friends are your age too, so. <laughs> At the time when you were making the flyers for those shows, were you already kind of into the Letraset thing? Obviously, like, yeah, like Charles Bronson was an influence in the covers of that kind of stuff. Yeah. But, um, were you already kind of experimenting with that or was it more sketch? Like, what, what, what were you up to? at that point back in those days yeah i didn't have photoshop at all so this was just straight photocopy cut and paste stuff right and uh, i used to get these sticker letters from the art store it's like it's similar to letter set except it won't crack and peel off but i would just use those and you know whatever photocopy shit i you know I would, I would use like mascara to get like shitty textures on things and then just photocopy that so yeah, but I don't know. I'd say back then it wasn't nearly as like experimental as it is now. Do you remember the first time you were paid for your art? <sighs> that must have been like during college or after college. Probably like after college. I remember I graduated and then I was just like busting ass, working on my Instagram page, you know. And I think it was probably like a good maybe almost a year before someone had actually like paid me for a, for a poster. It really seemed like it was like, you know, going fucking nowhere, right? But yeah. then I, they like, yeah, I can't at all remember who it was, but I remember just finally being like, oh, wow, cool. It made like 20 bucks off a show poster. Yeah, yeah. So I kind of remember like 2017, like, yeah, the year after I graduated, I didn't see much work at all. And then uh, 2019, things started really picking up. And then 2020 was better than that, or at least it was until the pandemic happened. And then when the pandemic kind of came to a close, then I'd say that was when I was at my busiest, right? I was able to quit my job. Work was picking up and you actually got to make that decision. Obviously, I got sent home because of COVID. And um, I'd say I looked like... When all the shows and tours were getting canceled, I lost a, quite a bit of money because bands were like, we don't need that poster or that shirt design, right? So I was like, fuck, I didn't know that I was like this reliant on the music industry because like all my stuff is for bands and friends and shit like that. So after a while, I was able to do commissions. Bands were like, hey, we're like releasing a single or we're doing these pre-orders for shirts or whatever. So I was able to like yeah during the pandemic it was just only album covers and shirts and then eventually show posters came back so uh it's all a blur of it's such a blur right uh yeah i think it was about summer 2021 that's when things started picking up in this because things were picking up in the states well long before they were up here so mm. and i started doing uh you know posters for shows down in california and then it expanded to other places so could you see the spread of how you were getting that kind of work kind of uh, i'd say so it's once enough people kind of get eyes on it over and over it's like oh you start to recognize who it is people tell their friends like you know it gets show posters you'll have like all these other bands you'll have five bands with four members each all sharing it on instagram right so it definitely gets around instagram sucks but oh yeah it's yeah. incredibly useful. It's hard to ignore it. Uh, it's honestly the one platform I use on a daily basis besides YouTube, you know, for work. Uh -huh. You know, you were saying that you get a lot of your work through Instagram. Was there a time, I guess, before Instagram that you were finding any kind of social media platform lucrative for you or even just to get your name out there and your images Not, out there? I'd say when I kind of started doing commissions, people were getting kind of tired of Facebook and gearing yeah. or Instagram, which is, you know, more so an art platform. Like, Instagram's purely, like, visual, right? You can have text, but it mostly serves, serves as, like, a, you know, photo-based, or once upon a time, it was a photo-based app. I think they think that they need to constantly be changing shit to, like, stay relevant, but... People just aren't into these new changes, right? So. No, exactly. It, it's funny because I saw on your Instagram a few nights ago, as you put it, you started some shit. You know? Oh, yeah. <laughs> you, yeah. Uh, about someone that was blatantly repurposing your work by posting some new band logos over top of your existing flyers. So yeah, you know, you've yeah. been ridiculously transparent about your influences 
you know, as well as yeah. uh, your process, like going so far as to show the step by step tutorial, right? Like on how you make yeah. your work. And obviously, there's a fine line between inspiration and straight up just theft, right? Okay. So, but I'm curious yeah. after a night like that of, of constant notifications from unwarranted and uneducated opinions and all that shit, do you ever wish that you kept your techniques to yourself? Oh, yes, for sure. Yeah. Yeah, there was, I think it was like last year, I was at my parents' house and uh, my sister's fiance, Zach, he, he like shows me a poster. He's like, did you make this? And I was so confused. I'm like, no, it looks exactly like I did. I'm like, that is fucking odd that they've gone this far out of their way. Some band, not from North America, but I was like, Jesus Christ, like people got really fucking good at like mm -hmm. emulating this style which you know in all honesty does pose a threat to me like being able to make money if 100 pages show up that look exactly like mine yeah that's a lot of competition to deal with right so i certainly wish that i had like gate kept a lot more but in terms of the uh the horse shit i started probably worth mentioning i drank like uh 15 beers <laughs> it was like you know like something just so minuscule happened and I went into like this fucking like manic rage. I actually saw a doctor and told him about it. He's like, I'm pretty sure that you've got fucking bipolar disorder. So we're... Uh, hey man, whatever, however you <laughs> figure it out. But like, we're honestly, you came out of it. I don't uh, think you came out of that like an asshole or anything like that. You had very valid points. I was, you know, that right, I messaged yeah. you after. I'm like, man, I really appreciate you because it is it is tough. Like, you, you put yourself out there, and I've from the start, I watched you put out these basically, like, yeah, tutorials on how to do your shit, like, step yeah. by step. And it's very easy if somebody were to just want to cop your shit they could just go on instagram and do that so i commend you for doing that because i think it's uh especially in like it feels like everything's being gate kept and then it takes something like youtube or these social media platforms for people to just post how they do things and it yeah. leads to creativity but at the same time it can also lead to just like copying your complete style yeah. and stuff like that right i kind of at first i was doing it just to kind of make my pose like more interesting right like i noticed like this was like back in the day i'd made a collage where i had like taken like an old like world war ii like face photo and just like kept inverting it and spray painting it and like chucking paint on it and scanning it back in and shit like that and that got like quite a few story views and people were like stoked on that so i was like oh maybe this is cool so but then once they started being like you have to post reels then i kind of had to take that route i'm not gonna go delete it and be like no fuck no, of off course, yeah yeah for sure but it's like you know some aspects that get irritating are people will make a poster that looks exactly like I made it and like send it to me and it's like yeah would well, you want like a big thumbs up like yeah it looks like I made it dude like right <laughs> off <laughs> yeah because you know like it, you've been very uh, clear you straight you straight up say in multiple interviews I've read Charles yeah. Bronson you know using Letra set all yeah. of these things that are easily kind of you can grab them and and put them together and make your style it is frustrating when somebody can just take that and i'll do something you know take another step further and just yeah i'd say the most irritating aspect is like i've kind of you know been doing this like like i said since i was like fucking 13 like went to college and it's like you know i've had to like talk to a lot of people and like you know share techniques with other designers and like you know put quite a bit of work into it i know it's but like by no means super fucking technical or anything it's not like i like own punk art but it's like one of my buddies said he's like there are undeniably fucking just droves of pages that are just completely dedicated to just making their shit look exactly like yours right so uh, that it's it's a problem that's very personal to me, so I understand quite a few people can't really relate to that, you know. But you know, that's certainly certainly a handful of you know worship pages or whatever, right? And it, it does get some of them are even uh, fucking so absurd that it's like, oh gee, you're like making process videos where you're cutting shit with an exacto knife and no ruler, eh? Like, oh, <laughs> great idea. Get that one from. So, like, you know, that certainly gets irritating. And, like, in addition to that, like, I've also had people just 
flat out, you know, they'll use like an album cover I made for a collage or some shit like that. And like, like it opened up this big discussion, I guess, where, and I got a lot of messages mostly oh, from, I would imagine. from graphic designers that were like, yes, it totally sucks when people like just fucking, you know, jack your shit or try to like, you know, weasel in on your clients and stuff like that. But within punk and hardcore, I think this is mostly a hardcore thing. There are a, just a droves of people that carry this mentality that like everything is fucking fair use, and like if you like if you get your shit stolen and if you get ripped off, you're not even allowed to say like I don't approve of this. This wasn't a good, like this wasn't very nice on my end. It's fucking weird, dude. Like I've even had people they've like you know gone to my page, screenshotted something, made their own poster, and then they send it to me. And like I'm like, dude, why? Like this isn't this uh wasn't a great deal on my end. And this one kid's like, you know it's not great, it's like egotistical piece of shit graphic designers. Like, sorry we used your fucking but it's for like a charity event. And this poster wasn't in English, so there's no way that I would know that. And I'm like, well, you know, that's great. It's for charity, but like, you, that means you're just entitled to grab whatever the fuck you like. Like, yeah, that's, it, yeah. And it's like it was as if I was the asshole for just being like, well, I don't like this very much. Like, some people just carry this like just absolutely brutal sense of entitlement. Fucking weird, man. And it's like you know. Like I said, there's a group of people that don't fuck with that, don't think that's cool. There's another group of people within punk and hardcore that are just like, no, nah, dude, like fucking, it's, it's punk to just steal everything and fucking have a shitty job and just like, you know, rip people off all the time, right? So, And then you're having these philosophical debates with these people and it's like... 3 a.m. and you're just like sitting on yeah. an app. Yeah, like I said, like there was, I talked to many other designers that are like, people will steal my stuff and when I asked them like, he's like, it kind of sucks going on Instagram and seeing someone has blatantly ripped you off and you know gotten paid for a commission that may as well be your fucking work, you know? Yeah. Yeah. So, and that's something that I deal with <laughs> fucking on a weekly basis lately, you know? So, and it's like, you know, it's not like I own this style, but it's pretty odd. Like when it's got the cut lines and it's just the checklist of absolutely everything I do, it's like it's pretty obvious. Like where you, you take it out back and shoot it with a gun as well. Yeah, you know? yeah. You come out of this with, you want to have a DIY, basically open platform to just kind of, hey, look at this. I'm doing this. You know, making those reels and and doing all that came out of a sense of like wanting to share and want yeah. to just kind of spread these artistic ideas it was never to just have your ideas blatantly ripped off so yeah and it's sure. obviously you know it's part of any artist's growth to mimic their favorite artists that's something that yeah. happens all the time right in in uh -huh. the early stages of things right but i guess that's that's the nature of instagram and stuff you kind of have to see people's early stages right away yeah. you know there's no sense of kind of doing this on your own terms and, and then yeah. kind of coming out with your own style and making some kind of debut you, you have to catalog everything nowadays or at least you have this kind of ambient need to so yeah it's, i don't know just like and it's like you know freelance isn't as awesome really as you think it might be like i recently had a band that like oh we like what are your rates for an lp versus a tape obviously a tape's going to be less work so mm -hmm. I, that would you know that was a cheaper rate so then they're like all right, we can go with the tape, but like, can we use it for like shirt designs and like reformat for the? And I'm like, you want me to do absolutely everything for like the cheapest that you can get it? Like, fuck, like, come on. So, between that and between people, like, like I said, like people are literally fucking getting confused. They're like, you didn't make this. Like, someone just went that that fucking far out of their way to just clone this yeah. shit. Yeah. So. Between that, I was just, like, having a real fucking stressful week. was feeling kind of walked over, and it's like, you know, mm -hmm. when people grab your shit or try to undercut you or just fucking, you know, go out of your way to, like, snag your fucking clients and shit, you just kind of are implying that, like, you just 
don't give a fuck about people's time or their work or their like process, right? So, and that's so that gets entirely no matter how transparent you've been, no matter how much heart yeah. soul you're putting into this, like you could go back and basically see your history on your Instagram page or your profile. Right. Yeah, and, so, uh, you know, but, but then always. somebody can see that and just see a bunch of content, you know, hashtag content. But then at the same time, you know, you uh, the platform being as toxic as it is, right around the time I started following you, Juliet Lewis started following you as well. I remember yeah. you posting about that and being pretty stoked about that. So, you know, for all the bullshit, there are some, some wins, right? Yeah, a couple of celebrities who follow that page. There was some other guy with like three million followers. I didn't know who the fuck he was, but I was like, that's kind of comical, right? Maybe I'm maybe I'm just an angry per. I'm definitely a fucking angry person, right? You know, yeah. I've actually made a list of some of your uh, captions or, or the text that's on some of your flyers, you know, oh, yeah. in the homicide uh, reports or, or yeah. in... Um, on your Instagram page, but you've got, okay, for example, pro-abortion, anti-Christ, you've got fuck your faith, yeah. cops for fertilizer, which I, awesome, I love this, drill a hole in McConnell's coffin so the maggots can get out and puke. <laughs> yeah, Fucking Poetry. Yeah. I feel yeah. like I'm at my most poetic when I'm at my angriest. Do you find that the taglines and these quotes, like, do they come naturally to you? Do you sometimes feel like you have to rework uh, some of the first ideas well the the first three that you mentioned those were kind of like just those are like song titles that I just decided to like you know uh, recreate into fucking posters you know because I think right when the yeah right when I got fucking sent home from the pandemic I was just like motherfucker like I am so bored like so I just would like pick a band I liked and pick like 10 songs from their their discography and just kind of you know, illustrate like the first thing that came to mind. It was just smashing out ten posters a day for something to fucking do. So it's like I guess that like fan art or whatever. That's kind of always been like part something I've done, right? Even yeah. back and dating back to like twenty like nineteen or whatever, right? So it was that and uh oh yeah, the McConnell one, that that one's yeah, so was that so did you post that after the second freeze up? That was the first one, yeah. That's nuts, man. Yeah, he so uh crazy. Had another one when they're like yeah. they're like you gonna, you gonna run for re-election he's just <laughs> 2026 like, was it yeah he's <laughs> like well, there's nothing it's like get the fuck rid of this guy uh, i think it was just faced with the existential dread of like i'm not making it to that year <laughs> that question was definitely like a stab which yeah. i love i love it that's fucking perfect man the time i was doing the fan art shit just to get me through the day uh you know like a lot of the bands i listened to were on 625 so i was you know going in the like just picking bands i like right so and they yeah max ended up following me we you know just started talking and stuff and then i think after a while i was like man like you know we've been in contact for like what like six months i'm like get me to do something for the label so that's how that came together and then um with the 31g thing um there was like the the instagram like outage or whatever the great fucking outage of 2021 i think when it didn't work for like a whole fucking a whole day and there was riots in this <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. everyone was losing their goddamn mind so then i had made that I'd made that poster that was like, oh, Zuckerberg lost like $7 billion a day. It's like, fuck you, asshole. You're absolute piece of shit. So I posted that right when Instagram was like working again. That one got like a lot of story shares and a lot of comments and shit. So that one kind of like, that one blew up a little bit more than my other posts. But then I just got a, a DM from someone who I didn't know. And they're like, hey, like how much are you like ask for posters i'm like oh yeah this much send me an email and then i got the email and it was from 31g i was like oh like what the fuck like that's sick so i don't know i guess they either had like stumbled across that post or just seen other posts i think what happened was someone got me to make a poster for uh deaf club and maybe that's how guys had stumbled across it but i don't know i guess it I guess it stood out to them and now i've like uh been in contact with justin and the other oh really other... justin directly 
Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, I've been working on various projects, you know, show posters. Justin's always got, like, fucking 10, 12 bands on the go and, you know, did a shirt for the label and stuff like that. So, yeah, yeah, I think that we've been trying to hang out for, like, a couple years now. Like, we were in San Diego and our, or we were in L.A. and our van broke, so we had to miss the San Diego show. Didn't get to meet him. Uh, Death Club was supposed to come up here, like, you know, I think it was this year at some point. They have criminal records, couldn't get across the border. Yeah. I think they're playing here with an alternate lineup or a fill-in, so I think they're playing here with Converge, and I know, I'm going to have to, like, check the check the date on that Shit, one. when is that happening? I want to go to that. Yeah, we just put a four-way split out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The one yeah, with the, um, Bob and Doug McKenzie. Bob and Doug McKenzie on it. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, too fitting because that's like the 625 logo. And it's like, pl- uh, play fast, eh? And then it was like, you know, a BC comp. It's like, you know, oh, of, so course, of course I'm shoot for the most generic, blatant idea I can come up with. So You know, I'm always kind of paying attention to your your hauls in regards to fax machines and uh, printers. So I just wanted to ask... Yeah. At this point in time, how many fax machines do you have and how many printers do you have? Um, Okay, so I have two fax machines that are currently working. The first one that I got, it was just fucking wouldn't work anymore, right? Like, it just broke, which sucked because that one was, like, by far the worst printer I've ever owned. Like, that would just fuck things up beyond... beyond The one that made the lines? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I did keep some textures out of it, like just black sheets of paper I'd run through. So its memory lives on, right? But I'm I'm (laughs) really looking like I like I once every couple weeks I'll just check Craigslist or whatever. I'm like, fuck, if I could find another one of those, like that would just be perfect, man. Yeah. So yeah, I have uh, currently have two fax machines. Uh, Yeah, and then I've got a I've got an inkjet printer that it'll leave. you know, horizontal lines in it, not anywhere near the extent that that, you know, fax machine would, but right. I, I usually don't use that one very much because it just drains ink like you just wouldn't fucking believe, right? Like, you know, you'll buy the thing for like 30 or 40 bucks and like 10 photocopies later, it's fucking done, right? Like, if anything, it's just a waste of money, so, yeah. Yeah, um, yeah inkjet printers, one of my friends, he's like, I just fucking threw my inkjet out and got a laser printer. He's like, those things should fucking be illegal, man. Like, they are disastrous for the environment. Like, you know, you can only you can only print so much. Like, the things just fucking they drain ink like you wouldn't fucking believe. It's funny because uh, the second fax machine, I bought it for twenty bucks, and I I went over to the went over to the mall and like met some old lady. And she's like, oh, here it is. I'm like, oh, where's the like, where's the photocopy button? And she was like, super confused. She's like, what do you mean photocopy button? I'm like, I'm like, I was getting, yeah. I'm like, you know how you can get faxes and it prints. I'm like, you can also like photocopy it. And she's like, oh, I didn't think about that. She's like, honestly, I sat in my garage for like 10, 20 years. And then she's like, like I was surprised to get an email about it. She's like it was also surprising to see someone your age looking to get a fucking fax machine. <laughs> <laughs> You can check out Tommy's online store as well as his music through the link in the show notes. Thank you so much for listening to The Schnoodlebug Show. Spread the word, tell your friends, and go make stuff. Ah!